Hey everybody and welcome to part 2 of the Minecrafter's Guide to Industrial Craft 2 Experimental. In this episode we're going to be talking about tools, armor, and weapons. All right, real quick before we get into this episode, I neglected to mention the solar panels that I had installed on the top of this original hut here. Um, solar panels are another way to uh, get some renewable energy, and these are just the very basic solar panels. We'll be talking about um, the more expensive ones a little bit later on, um, but solar panels will generate energy freely during the day as long as they have a clear path to the sky, and they will generate one EU per tick. If it's nighttime, this little sun will go away and you won't be able to uh, generate any energy. Uh, one cool thing about the solar panels is that they will still operate even though you uh, put a cover over it. So if I look at that inside of there, it's still working. So you can actually hide your solar panels pretty cleverly in your base. All right, before we get into some of the uh, weapons and uh, armor that we're going to be talking about, I just want to make it clear that the way to charge all of the um, pieces of armor that we are going to go over is just to throw them in one of the tiers of power storage. So for a bat box, you would just take your... Uh, item of choice, um, let's say uh, electric, electric jetpack, throw it up there, it'll drain some power out, recharge your item, and you can put it right back on your person using this little GUI right here. And all the different uh, power tier energy storage uh, blocks have that function. So that's how you can charge um, all of these items up. And there's also one more way that we'll talk about. All right, first we have uh, bronze um, set of armor, and this is a little bit better than uh, iron, so this is a good choice if you're looking for a little bit more protection, a um, little bit more resources are involved, but uh, good stuff. Next we have a scuba helmet which will allow you to breathe underwater, a hazmat suit and a hazmat suit leggings and this will protect protect you from our radiation poisoning um, which we're gonna find all about as soon as we start mining uh, uranium. Uh, the static boots will slowly generate um, electricity, very 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 small amount, um, kinetic energy and it will fill um, any sort of uh, electric pack that you have on or uh, charge up your tools. Eh, they're okay, they're not really that great. Um, next we have uh, the nano suit, and the nano suit is uh, basically, it's fairly easy to make uh, as we learned uh, in the previous episode. It just takes some carbon plate and these things called energy crystals. Um, this one takes night vision goggles, which is a little bit different um, than you're used to, a little bit different recipe if you've made this before. Um, but the nano suit basically and the quantum suit use power to absorb damage. So if you um, land too hard on your shoes, it'll absorb power from there if you get hit or blown up. Um, by a creeper, it'll uh, drastically reduce the uh, power charge in each of your item pieces, and you'll have to keep going and uh, recharging your pieces to stay stay alive. If they have no charge, essentially, it doesn't really do anything. Um, this is a quantum suit, and this is really hardcore stuff that's going to take some iridium plate to make this, and uh, some lapatron crystals, which we haven't learned about yet, but that's okay. Um, this is a really advanced, uh, the most advanced um, armor suit that Industrial Craft 2 provides, and uh, some cool benefits come along with this, um, with the pieces, uh, including the helmet, I believe, lets you automatically uh, eat the cans of processed food, like we processed steak in episode 1. It'll just automatically consume those as soon as your heart's or your uh, health bar gets low enough. Next, we have night vision goggles, which are fairly self explanatory. If you put these on with a charge, um, they will allow you to see at nighttime. Um, the composite vest is uh, its sort of like a diamond chest plate. It doesn't provide you as much uh, armor bars, but it will last a lot longer. I believe the diamond chest plate can absorb 512 um, or some odd number of damage points, while the composite vest can uh, withstand about 801, I believe. So uh, this is a little bit better in some respects to the diamond chest piece. And this will also protect you from the blast of a creeper if it's standing right next to you. You will not die if you have a composite vest on, even if you have no other armor equipped. Last but not least, we have the rubber boots, which will allow you to uh, fall from greater distances without losing too much health. So these are pretty cool if you don't uh, have any armor on or if you're climbing hills and going all over the place. Next, we have uh, basic bronze weapons, and we're missing the bronze hoe up top there. But these are just crafted in the same way that you would craft any other tool, and they're a little bit more durable than iron. Next we have three different types of uh, battery packs here. We have the regular bat pack, we have the advanced bat pack, which I don't have in my inventory here. That's uh, this one right here. And the uh, energy pack, and you can see that this one's power tier one. Actually, let's just go ahead and grab that last one. Du -du 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 -du. Electric jet pack. Advanced bat pack, there we go. Okay, so we have a uh, power tier one, 
power tier 2 and power tier 3. Um, the power tier 1 can only be charged in a bat box. Um, power tier 2 can be charged in uh, the MFE or the CESU, and uh, this can be charged in any of them. So tier 3 can be powered uh, by any um, storage, energy storage unit. It will just take longer depending on uh, the tier. And uh, basically what this does, it will allow you to recharge these tools, um, not the mining laser, um, but it will allow you to recharge these tools as you're uh, using them to uh, to allow you to stay maybe mining longer if you're using the drill or cutting down trees longer if you're using the chainsaw, which we'll talk about in a second. So these are just energy storage devices for your tools. Next, we have two different types of jetpacks. Um, this one here is the electric jetpack, and that's what I'm wearing right now. And the electric jetpack has, if I, uh, let me get out of creative and demonstrate. The electric jetpack works just like this. You go up, you go down, um, hold the space bar, just like you would jump. Okay, and it also has different modes. If you're in the air and you select your mode key, we have hover mode enabled, and you can kind of just hover around, uses a little bit less power. Um, you can switch back to hover mode disabled, and the way that you change that is if you go ahead and hit escape, go into controls, and down a little bit ways, you'll see uh, that there's some IC2 controls here, and this is the mode switch key, and we'll be using the mode switch key for a couple of the other items. Um, I do have rubber boots on. Let me demonstrate the rubber boots real quick for you. I'm going to just fall straight down, bleh, make a little blood splatter. Um, the boots do take damage, and uh, I actually don't lose very many hearts, so that's, uh, that's how both of those pieces work. This, this next jetpack here, and this is called just a regular jetpack, runs off of fuel, either biofuel or coal fuel. And you can fill this up using um, this canning machine here, which is completely different than the one I've already showed you. Um, I'll show you how to use this canning machine when we get to the, uh, the CF sprayer. Um, speaking of CF sprayer, this is the CF backpack, and it will hold construction foam. And uh, again, I'll get into that when we get to the CF sprayer. Next over here we have all different types of tools and uh, IC2 has included um, this little toolbox which is pretty neat. You can make the toolbox by uh, putting together some bronze item casings and a chest. And it uh, basically is a little uh, storage device for IC2 tools, tools only and you can put those right in here. Um, it will not allow you to put anything else besides the IC2 stuff in here. Um, so this is pretty cool. You can carry around all your tools without having to worry about all these different things taking up all kinds of inventory space. And uh, basically, um, these are just electric versions of the normal tools that you're used to. So you have an electric tree tap, an electric wrench, an electric hoe, an electric chainsaw. Or yeah, it's just called the chainsaw, actually. And then you have three different types of uh, mining drills. Um, one of the important things to know about the uh, electric wrench here is that you can change its mode into lossless mode. Oh, if I can figure out how to do that. Oh, let me get off this thing. Okay. So you can go between lossless wrench or uh, lossless disabled and lossless just means that when you go to wrench something um, there will be a hundred percent chance of you to get your block back instead of getting like a machine part or bits and pieces of your machine um, lossless mode will consume a lot more energy than just regular the regular uh, straight mode okay um, let me just go ahead real quick and grab like the electric hoe and see if there's any modes with the electric hoe while I'm here there is not so that's okay We'll put that in my toolbox and we will move on. Okay, that's these electric tools. Let's do the chainsaw. We'll go outside here. We'll cut down a few trees. I'll show you how fast the chainsaw is because it is pretty fast. Grab that. Let's make sure we're in uh, regular mode here. We'll change to daytime. There we go. Consumes a little bit of charge. Chops down trees at a really decent pace. Chops down single blocks extremely fast. Okay, just like this. Bzz, bzz. And if I had a... Uh, one of these tiers of backpacks on, which I don't have one in my inventory, it would keep this uh, this chainsaw charged up. So that's what these uh, that's what these packs are good for right here. Um, you can also, while I'm at it, you can also put a solar helmet on. Okay, and you use you they take a lot of resources, but you can put a solar helmet on, um, wear that around while you're outside, and it will slowly fill up um, one of these backpacks here. And you can take these backpacks and bring them over to one of your energy storage devices and actually dump all the power that you've gained by walking around out there, maybe with your static boots and your solar helmet, and load it up into your energy storage devices, whatever that may be. So that's another use for those. Um, next, we have the drills. And while we're talking about drills, I'm going to talk a little bit about the ore generation in IC2 because we haven't talked about that yet. I'm going to go ahead and grab a regular mining drill from my toolbox. And we can see that we have copper, lead, tin, and uranium ore. Um, lead ore is new, and you're going to need that to make some of these tools. Um, and the way uranium ore behaves is a lot different than it used to be. So that's something that's going to be one of the new features 
in this mod. If I just use a regular mining drill, it mines at a fairly decent pace. Looks like it goes a little bit faster than uh, an iron pickaxe, so that's not too bad. If I go ahead and grab, let's say, the next tier, which is diamond, which will allow me to uh, be able to mine obsidian. Let me just chop these down. Diamond drills pretty quick, can mine uh, uranium, no problem. And you'll also know that the change here is that you get the block of uranium. And we'll go into how to reprocess this in a later episode, uh, but normally you'd get those little nuggets of uranium, now you just get the straight block, almost like uh, the silk touch. Uh, here we have a mining drill on obsidian. Uh, faster than diamond, for sure, and uh, still pretty good. Let's grab this, get a diamond, very good. Oh, I have my jet back on. Okay, so this is this is pretty quick. Again, it's a little bit more uh, beneficial than the like using uh, a diamond, regular diamond pickaxe. And finally, the iridium, which is a lot faster and also a lot harder to make. Um, you're not going to be able to make this for a long time because it requires iridium reinforced plates, which are really complicated to make. We'll talk about that in a minute or uh, in a later episode. Um, here we have the iridium drill mining obsidian, and one of the great things about the iridium drill is you'll notice that it's a little bit shiny down there. It's enchanted with Fortune 3, which is freaking awesome, okay? So if I go and mine this with just like a regular uh, pickaxe or regular drill, I'm only going to get one diamond. Mine it with this, three and a clip. Oh my goodness, so even look at all the diamonds. Look at all the diamonds I got, 21 diamonds from those uh, uh, nine blocks. So very, very good. Um, it's not maybe as set and forget it as a quarry, or it's not at all set it and forget it as a quarry, um, but you can definitely get some serious loot, especially if you have this and you go into like the twilight or something. Holy crap. All right, um, while we're here, um, the small power unit and the regular power unit are going to be the uh, components in a lot of the tools that uh, we just went over here. Um, so that's important. Um, Oh, the jetpack. Yeah, you're going to need uh, these fuel cans. That's what these fuel cans are for. You're going to need to uh, fill up a fuel can in your canning machine to fuel up this jetpack before I forget. Okay, let's move on. The nano saber, which is uh, which is pretty awesome. I'm going to go ahead and change it to easy. We're going to go outside. We're going to spawn a uh, zombie pigment, and we're going to hit it with the nano saber. Okay, nano saber. Oh, four. That's not that's not very good. You say, well, it's not very good. That's because we haven't have it. We don't have it turned on. So let me go and grab a zombie pigman. We'll spawn him in there. We'll right click. We'll turn the nano saber on. Um, doesn't have any mode, so don't worry about that. We'll turn it on. We'll go ahead and hit this guy and blam! Nineteen damage. Uh, the nano saber hits for. Um, it's going to cost you a lot of power, so you got to keep it off when you're not using it. But the Nano Saber is a very powerful sword. Let me get him on pressure plate here. All right. I'm going to do the mining laser last because it's the most awesome, um, right next to the CF sprayer, which is the second most awesome. Okay, so as I told you before, we're going to learn how to use this uh, canning machine real quick. This is a lot more complicated interface than uh, what we're used to with most of the IC2 machines. And there's a couple new machines um, that have an interface that looks like this. But in order to uh, fill up your CF backpack, which I have up here, and you see it has uh, seven or 600, good grief, 6,700 millibuckets of construction foam and my construction foam gun, which is in my toolbox, and I'll pull that out there has 7,600, okay? And I think, uh, no, they don't share. Anyways, go ahead and make this canning machine. The recipe to make this is a little bit different. Um, set it to the mode just like this, fluid and rich, tank or cell. Um, you're going to make this CF powder, which is uh, some stone dust and uh, some clay and sand. You're going to put that inside the center of the canning machine, make sure it has power, and also make sure it has uh, water. So you're going to fill up water on this side. And then you can go ahead and put your uh, construction foam sprayer over here. And you can see that. Uh, can we please stay over there? Oh, it's full. It's full. It can't hold anymore. Get the backpack. Okay, we're going to put the backpack up here. And uh, you can see it just emptied out the entire contents of that. And it's filling up the construction foam backpack. So very good. That's how the canning machine works. You're going to use this in a lot of other... Uh, um, things you can change this to canning, so you have the um, fuel rods, uranium cells, and so on and so forth here. You can can meat, just like with the other machine. Um, you can take or fill from uh, all, all different types of settings, and we'll talk about that as needed. 
um, in the interest of time, let's go out here and test out this CF sprayer because it is awesome. Whoops. Let's go ahead and grab it. Um, CF backpack can be equipped just like this. You can put it on your person right back there. Very good. I'm not going to keep it on there. And uh, the sprayer has a few different modes. So we have normal mode and single mode. And this will take some of that CF that's in your backpack and it will spray it on the ground. Bloop. Just like that. Um, initially, you'll be able to walk through this stuff. It won't really be like a real block. But over time, it's actually going to harden up. And if I go ahead and grab some sand, you can uh, manually or instantly harden it up by right-clicking it with some sand, and it will look like that when it's through. And then furthermore, we can take those painters that we used like uh, from the last episode, and uh, you can go ahead and color construction foam. So that's a really, uh, really neat function of this stuff. You can see that you can color all different colors. And uh, the other great thing about CF foam is that uh, you can actually cover your wires just like this okay and the wire still extends through there so if I remove that you can still see that that the wire is there if I uh, oops, if I go ahead and put another one down just a little bit finicky there we go I gotta click right on it okay and I attach something there you can see that the wire goes through here so it's a really good way to like hide the wiring um, inside your setups if I grab a luminator which uh, luminator is a light source that IC2 has, it will consume 0.25 EU per tick. And this is a nice way to uh, light up, have your illuminators kind of hidden from the world. And you can attach them right directly to a uh, pipe like that, or you can attach them to CF foam and keep them lit up without anybody knowing where the power is coming from. The other thing that uh, the CF sprayer has is its second mode, which will drop a whole bunch of little, let me just make a hole, okay? And you can spray CF foam and fill up little areas just like that or you can drop a blob on the floor okay so that's the cf sprayer you can't launch it or anything like that unfortunately uh very good finally we'll talk about the and i can't believe i've done this without pausing at all that's pretty amazing if i have to say myself we're gonna grab the mining laser and i almost crashed the world last time i used a mining laser because i went totally overboard with it um, this will have a ton of different um oh my goodness gracious that's why i almost crashed the world is because it just it just causes total havoc um, this is a uh, scatter shot mode and uh, that's where I, I had a big problem. You can mine like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of blocks with this thing extremely quickly. You can just pound your way straight down the bed bedrock um, with the mining laser. Um, the more shots fired or depending on the setting that you have your mining laser set to, it will consume more or less power. So let's look at some of the modes. We have explosive, which is pretty cool. Bam, very destructive. Watch out when you're doing uh, stuff in your base with that. We have mining mode, and mining mode just works like this. So if you're just uh, going underground, you get to like level 15 where you know those diamonds are and mine it up. Okay, very good. So let's get out of here. Um, next, we have low focus, which is low range. We have long range, which is long range. We'll consume more energy. And we have uh, oh, horizontal kind of fires in a flat, um, fires a bunch in a flat. Uh, Horizontal line. Um, superheat is pretty cool. You can uh, superheat items. Um, you can even, even turn uh, sand. You can kind of like smelt stuff on the spot. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Just like that. Okay. Superheat. Um, and I think that's all the modes. Uh, we're back to scatter, which I don't want to do again. And I believe that is everything in this entire episode. Um, hopefully, there's nothing I missed. If there is something I'll miss, or I missed, then I will talk about it. In the next episode, which is going to be about uh, transformers, power conversion, we're going to talk about the different types of wires, how much they can carry, and how not to uh, blow up your base. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up if you like it, and check out all of our social media outlets listed here. And as always, guys, stay poised.